play now. Feel good and live your best life with Bloom Health Club. Here's Gail Guayardo. We are talking about a wellness revolution with a man who's done it all from model to actor to politician, author, race car driver, you <laughs> name it. What can't this man do? Joining me now is Antonio Sabato Jr. Welcome to the Bloom Health Club. My pleasure. Thank you for you guys having me. It's awesome being here. Well, we are super excited to talk to you. And I know Bloom Tampa Bay digital reporter and producer Brody Waddell did a great article with you kind yeah. of diving into how you started your career. And boy, has it been a career? I mean, talk to us, take us back to the awesome. Calvin Klein days. Oh, it's been, uh, it's Sorry been great. I've done, uh, yeah, I mean, I've done so much stuff, you know, I've done competition shows. I've done dancing with the stars. I raced professionally in Indianapolis, uh, with the Porsche team. I've, I've been around the world. I've done just pretty much everything, you name it, and I'm still doing it. You know, I have one of my proudest moments as an actress coming out, this film that I've produced called Grace by Night that is the best film I ever made. It comes out in June in the theaters. I have a book coming out right now. I'm about to go to Australia right now and do a book tour over there next month, so I'll be traveling over there. So uh, it's... And then moving to this country, you know, from Italy, um, not once but twice because, you know, we came here... And then uh, we ran out of money and we had to go back to Italy and then come back here again. So it's, uh, you know, we're strong people. My family and I, we were warriors. You know, my bloodline, I got to say, it's one of the few, you know, one of the few. We're very proud because we never, we never give up. You can't, you mm. can't give up. You know what I mean? You just got to keep on pushing, keep people on fighting, keep, um, you know, fighting for your beliefs and, and, and uh, your morals and things that you want to, you want to do, do those things. Uh, and also fitness, you know, I, I train harder and wiser now in my, in my fifties and ever before. And, um, I think, uh, you know, training is, is something that's helped me so much and I just can never stop. I gotta, I gotta keep pushing myself. Yeah. And I, I want to talk because you see this man and he, he said it earlier, so I'm not getting, uh, giving any secrets away, but he's 52 feeling better than ever. Yeah. And I think so many of us, including myself, I, turned 57 in October. I have four daughters wow. and I really want to get to a phase of my life where I I'm, I'm living stronger and better yeah. as I age. And I think that that's possible. Mm -hmm. And Antonio, you believe a lot of that has to do with going back to our roots to going back to the yeah. way things used to be, because we really strayed far away and we're, and we're sick as a nation. I think we are, you know, we promote fitness, but people don't really know how to, you know, take care of themselves. And they always want answers instead of just looking at themselves and go, it shouldn't be that, that, that difficult. It shouldn't be that expensive to take care of yourself. It should be a lifestyle. That's why I don't believe in diets. I don't believe in, you know, trainers or gyms or specifically, you know, or products. Because if you create a lifestyle that goes really well for you, that you can relate to, that goes with your values, with, with you know, getting up in the morning, having this, you know, you, you don't have to worry about taking showers. You know, you just know that, you know, if you're sweating or you're working hard, you're going to go and clean up, right? So the same thing should be about fitness and about the way you eat, the, the food that you put in your body. It shouldn't, it shouldn't be that expensive, that difficult. So I create a lifestyle for yourself that you can do every day. You don't think about it. It becomes part of your life. And then at that point, you don't treat it like you have to. Because, you know, diets, oh, I got to do a diet. I got to see this trainer. I got to go to the gym. I got to pay my membership. I got to, you know, it's, there's always this thing about you don't really want to do it. You, but if a lifestyle is different, you know, you get up in the morning, you're going to brush your teeth. You know, you're going to have a cup of coffee. You have those things that happen automatically. And so for me, I created a lifestyle that goes really well for me. So I push myself. I work out two hours in the morning and I work out two hours in the afternoon, seven days a week. I don't have a day off. I work out and train every single day. Wow. Uh, no matter what, whether I, I have a cold, whether it's sunny, whether it's raining, what it's my lifestyle. I do it no matter what, you know? So I try to teach that to my kids. I try to teach it with people that, that ask me, what do you do? And, and they go, well, that's all you do. Yeah, that's all I do. But it's a lot because most people can't do that. You know, they do it. A diet could be followed for three or four weeks or whatever. And then after that, they get bored. They want to, or, or people, they, this is the funniest thing. You know, when people go on vacation. They're training in the gym. I'm like, no, vacation is where you're supposed to chill out. If you want to train, train at home. Mm -hmm. 
train when you when you're living your life, but when you decide to have a vacation, I'm not gonna go and, and take a two two ten day trip and in, in, in Cabo and train in the gym. I'm I'm just saying your lifestyle should be more important about a daily day situation where you get up, you know what you're doing, and you do it every day. You don't even think about it. It becomes part of your life. And that's how I create this thing for me. And it works really well. Now, I know that you you love this country. You love living here. You bought a home in Tarpon Springs, which we think is so cool because yeah. I'm, I'm third generation of Tampanian. And I, right. I love Florida. I love everything about it. And, and you live here now. Yep. But I do want to talk about the lessons learned from, you know, your mother country in Italy. You said yep. they have now passed laws, laws that, gosh, after hearing it, I'm like, why aren't we doing that in this country when it comes to what goes into our bodies? Yeah, Italy is the, is the cleanest, best country to eat. I'm not only because the Italian food is number one in my book, I mean, but they made it into the law. Like you got to have clean food. You got to have God given food, not processed food, not main man. You know, they, they wanted to bring that uh, artificial beef, you know, that everybody's talking about the Bill Gates and all these people who are, you know, I, I'm not a very big fan of these people, but they wanted to bring that beef to Italy. They said, no, you're not allowed here at all. You have to have real beef, which is cow eating grass or whatever, you know? So that should be implemented in every country. But, you know, it's about money, it's about power, it's about government making money. And, and in our country, pretty much our government owns, wants to own everything, wants to own the farming. Uh, look, all these farmers, what's going on nowadays, you know? We need farmers. They keep me alive. I love beef. I, I can eat beef every single day. Um, and so please don't take my farmers away. Right, you, know, right. I, I, you know, we have really good beef in our, in our country, made in the USA, that people should promote. Uh, and we don't do enough of that. So, and now they're, they're trying to take all that stuff away because they want to control what we eat. What we, beef has been great for us from the beginning of time. Eggs have been great for us, but now they, you know, it's cholesterol, this, cholesterol, that, they change it. I remember coming here in the 80s, mid 80s, and eggs were everywhere. Like, you got to eat eggs, breakfast is the best mm -hmm. thing. And then it, years later, be like, no, cholesterol, you can't eat eggs anymore. Eggs are dead. Like, you see, yeah. it's the phase, you know, and... Um, so I think people need to really get a get a good grip on what's going on, uh, understand their bodies, understand what you need to do as a human being, and ask as many questions as you can and find out for yourself what really works and what really doesn't. But I can tell you one thing, man-made products, protein powders, pre-workouts, all this stuff is garbage. Yeah. It's stuff that you should not take at all. You want some pre-workouts? I'll have a cup of coffee. You want to have some protein? I'll eat a steak. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Those are the things that I can follow because my body reacts really well, and especially as much training as I do. I need good food. You know, we eat at home. My 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 girl cooks the best food. We eat Italian, you know, Greek, what all kinds of stuff. But and also another thing is very important is that Americans, especially, they eat way too much, too many calories, mm -hmm. and we eat a, a huge breakfast that has three thousand calories. Then you move into lunch, you have another 3,000 calories. Then you move into dinner, you have, that's almost 10,000 calories on a daily basis. Yep. So I don't eat breakfast, I fast. I like fasting till about noon. Mm -hmm. I have my first meal at noon, and then I have another meal before going to bed. And I don't eat and go to bed right away, but between 6.30 and 7.30, I have my next meal. And I don't follow the calories thing. I just know that that's what I need to eat, and I'm good, I'm good to go, and I keep my weight and I keep my training, and it's easy for me. So it shouldn't be that hard. And, and this lifestyle of yours also keeps you moving. I mean, yeah. you are a busy man. You mentioned the movie. You mentioned the book. You mentioned you're, you're racing competitively now yep. and professionally. And leading up to this, I mean, you had this incredible career on General Hospital. You were in this, you know, an actor, mm -hmm. Janet Jackson video. I mean, you look at your resume and it's mind boggling. And I know this is something that you touched on with Brody Waddell yep. and the article that you guys wrote together. Mm -hmm. And that's like, a, I think a big question um, is, is how you were able to pivot and conquer so much in life. You got to have, you got to believe in yourself and you got to get to a place where it's your life. Nobody's going to give you anything, you know, they're, they're, you can pray all you want. And I'm very faithful to God. And I have, you know, my connection to God is a very personal one. But God, you know, a, a good father is not going to give you everything you want. He's going to make you earn it. Mm -hmm. 
And I think in life, we need to believe in ourselves. We need to start feeling good with ourselves. You know, people always look at other bodies or other relationships or other lives or other people instead of looking at themselves. Uh, and I know it's it's a lot easier to look at other people. That's why people gossip all the time. And there's, there's a thousand gossip magazines out there because it gets you away from your own life. But then you're forgetting about your life. You're forgetting about who you are. And God created you to be one of a kind. We are all different, unique, and, and special as so many things. But we need to value those things. We need to look at ourselves and go, why am I here? Why, why is this life so special to me? Mm. You know, why, why are the things that make me different? And I think if we, you really focus on that and you, and you appreciate yourself, then you have more belief in yourself and then you want to get better. And once you start living like that, you start expecting a better life in fitness. You start expecting a better life in your relationship because you give yourself value. And I think by searching value in others is never going to work because their lives is their life. Your life is your life, no matter what anybody says. But we always, we always want to be appreciated by everybody. We always want to be loved by the world. You know, we got, we got to have the likes. And the, the, you know, we live in this society right now. It's like the likes, the this, the that, the followers. But instead of like, what about ourselves? Do we love each other? Do we love ourselves? Do, do, we, do we know ourselves really well? And I think that's what's missing the most nowadays. Yeah, my older brother, Paul, when I first got into this industry in my early 20s, gave me the advice don't be looking at what they're doing or what they're doing or look at your own ball because that's your life. And, and I think when you do that, you know, you're able to focus, like you said, on your own personal journey. And by doing so and by having solid footing, yeah. um, you can also take care of what's most important in your life. And I know Correct. for you and like me, my family is my everything. Yeah. My husband is my everything. My four daughters, they're my everything. And you build a foundation that makes life a lot better right. if, if you're not worried about all, all, what, liking and all the distractions. Different, right. There's a lot of so many distractions out there. And, you know, we have these phones nowadays that can give us so much information, but at the same time, they bring so much loneliness. There's just people just stuck on this small screen, and that's all they dedicate themselves to. Uh, instead of looking at in the mirror and go, hey, this is who I am. This is what I got to do. This is what I was made to do. This is my passions. This is what I would love to go to, you know, or this is what I like to meet. Don't have any limits on yourselves. You know, I, I've seen people get out of this funk, you know, and, and all of a sudden change their lives overnight, really, and and, and finding a new lo love for life and, and loving themselves in a different way and giving back. Because, you know, because people that feel good about themselves, they give back to so many people. They really do. Because it's just, it's automatic. You know, you when you shake hands, you're really looking at people in the eyes because you feel good with yourself. You have nothing to hide from. And you don't feel ashamed. And so... You're very open with life in general, and you appreciate every moment every day. And that's why I say every day counts, because you don't know who you're going to meet today. You don't know what's going to happen. But right now in the moment, if you appreciate what you have now, it's very important because life is so fast. You know, I know you worked on an article with Brody. You know, Antonio was kind enough. He was on our nationally, or I should say now globally syndicated show, Bloom, on, which is headquartered in Tampa, Florida. But we also have this huge online platform, which we're streaming on now, Bloom Tampa Bay. So, you know, after you talked to Antonio, what were some of the big takeaways for you, Brody? I mean, like he's been talking about it this whole time. Like you have to have your reason, your why, and work hard and go for it. And I really wanted to dive in. Like I asked, I asked you a lot of good questions. You got back to me quick. I you was, did. I was shocked. So that's really cool. I'm actually looking at it right now, <clears throat> to kind of refresh myself on what we had talked about. And it really, like the biggest things, like I want to ask you is, what what do you think sets the people apart that are able to do kind of like what you've been able to do and others that don't? So for instance, like being able to pivot and some people just stay stuck. I, just not giving up, you know, that, that think, you know, that, um, it's never over, you mm -hmm. know, it's never over. And I think, like I said, if, if you appreciate your life and you have dignity within yourself, you appreciate yourself, you want more for yourself, mm -hmm. then you stop looking. It's not a battle, you know, for example, fitness is another example that I, that I can relate to is that when you, when you go to the gym and you work really hard on something, most people want to train and compete with the person next, next to them, you know, to go to the gym, I, I want to weight lift more than you. I want to show you. Instead of like the battle within yourself is more important than that because that's the battle that you have in life is within yourself to get better. And when you see yourself progressing and getting to the next level instead of competing with everybody because competition is good. To, you know, If you're a professional athlete, I get it. You want to finish first, I get it. But when that is over, 
the competition should be with yourself. You know, every day we we're, we're competitive the way we drive. You know, when to get there before uh, people crossing our way the wrong way. There's always this thing about competing with with people and stuff and the workforce and all that instead of like, oh, I have more followers. And instead of looking at yourself and go, am I a better person today? Did, did I did I learn something more that I didn't know yesterday? Did I push myself more today? Do I do I feel and look better than yesterday? Am I eating better? Am I, is my relationship with my significant other better today? So I think if you expect that out of yourself on a daily basis, you can't fail because, and also failing is good. If, if I fail today, tomorrow I'll do better. If I fail today, tomorrow I'll do better. That kind of thing. You know what I mean? You learn from your failures and you keep moving forward by understanding yourself to a perfect level where I know myself, I know what I want, I know what kind of life I want, and I, and I know the people that I want to surround myself with. It's, it's, it's everything is clear when you get out of the funk, you know, when you get out of the smoke. Yeah. Because if you're in it and you're always going at it, always going at it, trying to prove to the world, trying to prove, you forget about life. And life is so precious because, and I keep saying it over and over again, life is very short. Mm -hmm. You know, turtles live longer than us. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's, it's, it's very, and anything could happen. And another thing we we're talking about earlier is just people are, this kind of environment where you stress yourself, stress kills Stress, you know, people are, you know, how many ads do you see on a daily basis about antidepressants? A lot. I mean, it's constant every single day. Take this, you'll feel better. Take this. Take, you know, if you take this, you, you might throw up for three days, but that's okay. Keep taking it. Right. Instead of eating right, instead of getting out of this mess, that like, maybe I don't need all these medication. Maybe I don't need all, maybe I just need to live life yeah. and see it in a different way. And I think, too, what I love about, and there's two things I want to hit on, but I, I love that you're like, you know, just do it. Like you say, people are like, I, I want to move to this. I want to travel here. I want to do that. But then they oh, never yeah, do yeah. it. And if you don't do it, you you may never get your opportunities. Mm -hmm. You're never, you're never going to, you know, when Christopher Columbus decided to come here and Spain said, I'll give you three ships to come here. He didn't say, well, you know, I changed my mind. It's a little <laughs> scary now. He said, I'm going to finish this and I'm going to get to the other side. Uh, and even when, when people were pretty much with a knife on his throat and go, are we getting there? He's like, yes, we're going to get there. <laughs> so it's, it's a matter of the will and the will that we have that God gave us is something special. I mean, um, we have done things, amazing things. And, and, and when we see amazing things nowadays, we're all like surprised. I'm like, oh, the, the person swam from Cuba to, uh, to Miami and she was 70 years old. Remember a lady yes. just, we are capable of doing amazing things. If you really focus on something, you really want it, you know, for yourself, you know, and, uh, those are the moments that we need to appreciate, but also we're all capable of doing that. And so we need to appreciate that maybe until now you didn't know yourself too well. You had an idea of what it was given to you, but that's not who you are. So it's fascinating to find people out like that they change and then you see them like uh, months later and they're like, oh, what happened to you? You know, mm -hmm. and that, well, I changed my lifestyle. I changed mm -hmm. my lifestyle. And I think it goes back to lifestyle. Lifestyle has, is everything. The other thing I really admire about you that is also very, very important to me is that, and you mentioned this earlier, and I know you talk about it in your new book about to be released next week. I think it's really important to remember the, the, the people that paved the way for us. I mean, I was telling you on the way up to the streaming center how my grandfather you know, built the largest dairy farm in West Central Florida, was the first to pasteurize. This is a man who came from Incredible. Italy and didn't know how to Incredible. even speak English, and he was able to do that. My other grandfather, same thing from Italy, you know, became a prominent surgeon in this town. And when I first started in my career, and it was hard because people think that you make it to this level mm. just with no work. It's just like mm -hmm. a little fairy dust comes in and it happens. That's not the case. You know, I'd right. go call complaining and, you know, they wanted to change my name to Gail from Gail Guayardo to Gail Green or Garrison. And my dad had a little bit of an <laughs> accent. He told me, don't come home if you change your name. Yeah. And you know, I had all these people that would stood behind me that paved the way before me. And like you said, you have this DNA, you have this lineage. And I think a lot of times we're so busy saying what's wrong with who raised us and what's wrong with this, that, that we forget the sacrifices that they made yeah. to, to, to bring us to where we are today. Yeah. The respect and the dignity that you have, you know, that you should have for your family and, 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 
and to to learn your bloodline, to understand where you're from, you know, your parents, you know, your 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 DNA. Where is this thing from? You know, like my family and I, we lost, you know, when I in 1980, and this is in the book, one of the events in my life that was tremendous. It was it was horrible in one way, but another way it was moving. We lost a home to a fire. We lost everything. And I was I was eight years old in this house, and I was left there for an hour because my parents, my dad had to go to a meeting, and my mom was with my sister. She was playing piano at the time. And I talk in the book about this, and the whole the whole house caught on fire. We lost everything. And I, you know, I was lucky enough that I got my dog out of the house, and and I escaped. And my father found me. As a matter of fact, when he came back to the house, he thought I was in the house. So he, he went through the, the fire department. He went broke in. They didn't want to let him in. And he went in there and he was like, where's my son? He's not here. He's going crazy. And then he had some kids go down the street with some scooters and go, if you find a little boy walking around, whatever. And But that was an event in my life where my family was on the road looking at our place going, we lost everything we ever had. And so what do you do? And I saw my parents pick themselves up. And my father, you know, was, was a big time actor at the time. And nobody helped him out. Nobody gave him a hand. Nobody even allowed him to come. We had nowhere to go. We had no clothing. We had the car in the garage. And that's it. Everything was burned to the ground. And so it goes to show you, you can't give up. And what my, mom, my mother had a store, a clothing store. And so we stayed in a motel that night. And then the next day, my mother took me and my sister to the store because we had nowhere to go. And my father was running around trying to figure things out, whatever. And, and my mother was, it was the worst times in our life, right? One of the worst times in our lives. And then a stranger walked in and my mother was just against the wall. She says, can you help us? Can you watch my kids? And she said, yeah, I can watch your kids and, and you can have my place. And to this day, this lady in Rome is one of our closest friends complete stranger at the time so you can never give up on life and so by growing up and dealing with these kinds of things and you, and there's many stories that uh, moved my family uh, and moved me made me a better person um, that you can never give up you know you can never say it's over you know and, um, and 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 so that showed me that that's the kind of DNA that I have and that's why I'm still going at it I love it. I love it. And, and and before we go, I want to talk about your movie. Tell me about oh, yeah. that and why you're so passionate. This movie is called Grace by Night. And it's, it, for an actor, you, you, you wish and hope that you could play uh, in, in a film like this. It's it, from the, I read this story many, many years ago. And we were trying to raise the money for this film. It's about a man who uh, loses everything. His son dies of a suicide. And he gives up on life. And uh, he has to rebuild his life again. And and by doing so, he decides that maybe God put him in a different place or, you know, he has to find a way to survive in a sense of mentally survive because his life is completely over. And he decides to help um, people by taking a hotline and going, you know, if you need help, please don't kill yourself. I'll come over there and, and, and try. So he helps all these people out who are barely on the edge of life. And by doing so, he rebuilds his, his soul and he finds a young man who has no life, who is pretty much getting ready to get beat up by his own father. And he says, stop, don't do that. You know, let me, let me take this kid and let's see what I can do. And, and he turned in, in, into one of the best wrestlers in the country. And, and um, so it's, it's a sport movie. It's a motivational film. Um, this movie went to all the Christian film festivals around the world. We won everything from best picture to best director. I won, I think three or four awards so far. And we have an award coming up in Atlanta, uh, this week that I, that looks good, but it's one of those films that I, that I'm just so proud of because it's so good. It's, it's just a good film. It's shot beautifully. The music, the acting, the performance, um, and moves you and, and we need more of those films, you know, uh, you don't have to be a Christian to watch this film. It could be any, any, any background of any sort, because it's, it's one of those films that it, it reminded me when I watched Rocky for the first time, uh, in the seventies. And I, I watched Stallone doing the, a, a film that I never seen before that moved me, uh, and still moves me to this day. So I'm very proud of this film. It's called Grace by Night and it comes out in the theaters in June. Really exciting, man. What, a, what an incredible career you've had. Brody, any questions for Antonio? 
I wish. I don't think we have enough time yeah, to right, ask all, right. all the questions. Well, we, I think we covered it all. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, we really appreciate. It. We know what a busy man you are. We're, oh, my pleasure. We're proud to have you in the Tampa Bay area, and even more proud here. that you were on Bloom and now an official member of the Bloom House.